Alright guys, it is a warm summer night in late January, I am thrilled to say. Here uh, in Doomsday Trailer, uh, it is an exciting Wednesday night, uh, somewhere around January 24th, 2024. Uh, so anyway, I am finally here at uh, 8.30 at night. We're finally getting around to the mainstream media. What is, uh, we're just going to do some, uh, don't have to go far doom scrolling in the mainstream media. The number two story on the planet, many versions of this story, this is the New York Times. The New York Times, uh, in the number two story on the planet, according to Yahoo News, asking the question, apparently without a trace of irony, can the world's largest cruise ship really be climate friendly? Hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> if you haven't seen pictures of this thing, on Tuesday, that would be yesterday of course, in a ceremony that of course involved a soccer ball, Argentine soccer superstar Lionel Messi pressed a button and a bottle of champagne smashed against the bow of Icon of the Seas. Icon of the Seas, christening the world's largest cruise ship at its home port of Miami, like an A-list celebrity stepping onto the red carpet, the arrival of Royal Caribbean's 250,800-ton ship has captured the world's attention with some marveling over its cutting-edge features like the largest water park at sea, while others criticize the gigantic ship's potential to damage the environment. Mm. With the capacity to carry nearly 8,000 people, the 20-deck, meaning 20-story, 1,200-foot-long vessel whose inaugural cruise with paying passengers, passengers departs on Saturday is the size of a small city. There are eight neighborhoods packed with amenities that include a 55-foot waterfall, six water slides, and more than 40 restaurants bars, and entertainment venues, according to Royal Caribbean. The ship, which is registered in the Bahamas, also sets a new standard for sustainability. Yes, the 250,000-ton, 1,200-foot-long, 20-story ship that houses 8,000 people, uh, according to Royal Caribbean, sets a new standard for sustainability with the use of energy-efficient technology designed to minimize the ship's carbon footprint and moving move closer to the company's goal of introducing a net zero ship by 2035. This is Nick Rose, uh, who apparently, with no trace of irony, uh, has the title Vice President of Environmental Stewardship at Royal Caribbean Group. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that, that implies that there's also a President of Environmental Stewardship at Royal Caribbean, quote, we live by one single philosophy, which is to deliver the best vacations 
responsibly and to do that we build our ships with the core principles of sustaining our planet and communities. Uh, for decades the cruise industry has been criticized for its negative impact on the environment. A 2021 study published in the Marine Pollution Bulletin found that despite technical advances, cruising remains a major source of air, water, and land pollution affecting both fragile habitats and human health. While environmental groups have welcomed yeah, I bet some of the features on Icon of the Seas. Some say building such huge ships is contrary to the cruise industry's long-term goals of sustainability and preservation. Is there anyone <clears throat> on this planet whether or not you're calling yourself a limp dick lefty mainstream environmentalist thinking for one nanosecond that the single most indefensible industry on this planet has a long-term goal of sustainability and preservation. They have one goal, the short-term goal of separating clueless fucking morons from their money. This is Mark Kiever, director for uh, the Oceans and Vessels program from Friends of the Earth. The ships are getting bigger and bigger and that is the wrong direction for the cruise industry to be going. If you were really thinking about sustainability and not thinking about your bottom line, you would not be building a cruise ship with a capacity of nearly 10,000 people. Close quote. Uh, with more than five different brands, Royal Caribbean has a fleet of 65 cruise ships of various sizes. Icon of the Seas was built to meet demand and deliver experiences that its consumers were seeking. The company said, adding that all its ships carry the same sustainability principles. And some of this is a long article. And so somewhere in this article, I'm not going to try to find it, someone is talking about there is no silver bullet to making the cruise ship industry more sustainable. Uh, that there is no solution, no silver bullet uh, solution. This was a fellow named Humpty Dumpty. Amazingly, for about the first time in a month, his comment was not ripped down for violating the Yahoo uh, News Community's guidelines. Humpty Dumpty. For the New York Times to even ask this absurd question ironically is a testament to the arrogance and hubris of the human race. There most certainly is a silver bullet to making the cruise ship industry more sustainable. Put a silver bullet through every one of these planet-eating icons of stupidity and send them to the bottom of the ocean where maybe they can serve as breeding grounds for fish to replace all the dead coral reefs. But I am glad to see that at least one media outlet called Jalopnik uh, <clears throat> had some honest reporting 
the icon of the seas is 250,000 tons of floating carbon emissions horror. There you go. Uh, so it's kind of what you just heard. Uh, I do like this uh, little bit of uh, backstory. <clears throat> Cruise Lines International Association predicts that passenger volume on the on these goddamn uh, cruise ships, passenger volume will hit 36 million clueless morons in 2024, which is up about 20 percent from pre-pandemic records set in 2019. Yes, cruise-related emissions plummeted to nearly zero during the corona panic pause in sailing, but by August of 2021, the industry had not only returned to pre-pandemic emissions, but exceeded those numbers. Climate Trace says that new heights have been reached, nearly 6% higher emissions from cruising as compared to before 2020. So we are going to go from just the, uh, just generally speaking, the most indefensible, uh, just all around industry on the planet to perhaps <coughs> the number one single most indefensible, inexcusable, fully avoidable environmental catastrophe serving nothing but clueless morons and rich corporations and that would of course be Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula tourist train. So what is the latest news coming out of the Yucatan Peninsula? Mexico's Yucatan tourist train sinks pilings into relic-filled limestone caves activists show. Otherwise known as cenotes is what they're talking about here. <clears throat> Activists in Mexico have published photos of steel and cement pilings from a government project that were driven directly through the roofs of sensitive limestone caves on the Yucatan Peninsula. The network of caves sinkhole lakes known as cenotes and underground rivers along Mexico's Caribbean coast are both environmentally sensitive and have been found to hold some of the oldest human remains in North America. President Andre Manuel Lopez Obrador had promised that part of his controversial 20 billion dollar with a B tourist train project known as the Maya train would run on an elevated causeway support, supported by pawlings to avoid crushing or, disturb, or disturbing the caves and sinkhole lakes known as cenotes. They provide, the cenotes, provide the region's only fresh water source because there are no surface rivers on the Limestone Peninsula. Authorities from the National Institute of Anthropology and History had claimed that soil mapping studies would be carried out to ensure the supports for the causeway would not hit the caves. But caver and water quality expert Guillermo de Cristi said Monday, that was a fucking lie. Quote, the promise from the president and the director of the Archaeological Society 
was that they, meaning the cenotes, would be protected. Lopez Obrador lied. They are not protecting the caves in Cinco Lakes, and the damage is irreversible. Yes. Uh, De Christie found the pilot column sunk through the caves Sunday at a cave complex about 17 miles south of the shithole town of Playa del Carmen. The columns appear to be almost three feet wide with a steel jacket and poured cement core. Uh, because the caves were, anyway, uh, Anyway, just for time's sake, the 950-mile railroad runs in a rough loop around the Yucatan Peninsula and is meant to connect beach resorts and archaeological sites. Lopez Obrador has raced to finish the Maya train before he leaves office in September rolling over the objections of ecologists, cave divers, and archaeologists. He exempted it from normal permitting, uh, public reporting, and environmental impact statements claiming it is vital to national security. Um, its only real source of significant income would be tourists. However, given its frequent stops, unwieldy route, and lack of feasibility studies, it is unclear just how many tourists will actually want to buy tickets. The train was partly built by the Mexican Army and will be run by the armed forces. Good God, but uh, speaking of groundwater uh, destruction on the planet, uh, you don't have to ram a, a, a train through your groundwater to destroy it. You can usually just have 8 billion people drinking it. Several versions of this story, uh, I'm just going to read a little bit of it from good old Associated Press, groundwater depletion accelerating in many parts of the world, study finds. Wow! The groundwater that supplies farms, homes, industries, and cities is being depleted across the world and in many places faster than in the past 40 years, according to a new study that calls for urgency in addressing the problem. Uh, would you believe that the declines were most notable in dry regions with extensive cropland? Uh, there you go. Anyway, I think we all know that. And sitting here in Florida talking about groundwater depletion. Uh, but these goddamn, uh, well, it's everything. But uh, it's these uh, bottled water companies. Uh, I, I mean, just sucking millions and millions and millions of gallons out of um, Florida's natural springs. They're kind of like our version of cenotes, just being, uh, you know, sucked dry and filled in those single-use plastic bottles to sell to clueless fucking morons. Oh, Jesus, you don't have to go to Mexico to see the end of the world. But anyway, I've got to wrap this up because I'm getting hungry. And it's my dinner time. Bye, guys.